Okay. All right. Hi, my name is Eduardo Barca. This is uh, Andy Lipson. Welcome to What's Left, the weekly political discussion challenging the mainstream left. I'm Eduardo Barca with co host, teacher and socialist Andy Lipson, and writing teacher Jessica and community organizing socialist Kenny Cepeda are not with us on this episode today. <laughs> we will be doing this on our own, so I will continue at we are online at what's left podcast.com. Again, that is what's left podcast.com. You can find the link into our site in the episode notes. You can also find their personal social media handles as Don Eduardo Barca and ZPKE on Instagram and just Twitter handle as jhomi 89 And please subscribe, rate, review, turn on your notifications, and share your favorite episode wherever you found this episode. Thank you. All right. Well, I wanted to discuss friends. That was the topic of today with what's happening in France, Macron out there messing with people's pensions and it becoming better. I mean, the, um, the, the protests are becoming more and more intense and I am so appreciative of the people out there. I love France. People know I've got my heart out there, but Andy wanted to do something else. <laughs> As always, changing it up, calling me yesterday. Why, Andy? Why? What did you have in mind? Yeah, and let's let's be clear. Eduardo had had proposed this episode about the struggle going on in France and going more into detail about what it is. That is important, actually. Um, but I found myself this last this and saying that that was the plan up until last night of Wednesday, you know, yesterday Wednesday, where I called Eduardo and said I wanted to make a change. Um, <laughs> and I found myself not really motivated to look into it that much. Um, I've been tired this week a little bit, um, maybe feeling lazy. I don't think there was any, like, there's lots of things going on. There's the pen, these new Pentagon papers. There's all the stuff with AI and Elon oh. Musk talking about that. Um, I mean, more than that, but I mean, there's plenty of things to talk about. Uh, but number one, Jessica wasn't here. And Jessica isn't here. Um, and number two, I, I really felt like, Eduardo, since you and I, this it has it's been a long time since it's just been you and I on an episode, and it got me to thinking about um, essentially us starting what's left in our first episode that we did, which is almost five years from now. Um, on it was the, the our first episode was posted May eighteenth, two thousand and eighteen, um, and so I I just I was washing dishes and I and I was like, I just it's just me and Eduardo. I kind of want to talk about that episode. I want to talk about that time five years ago, us starting this and sort of what we make of it now um, and just you and I just talking about where how where we were and where we are right now. Maybe not about what's left, but you and I. Um, and that's what I hope to talk about today in relationship to what's left. Um, uh, but it's, it's just something I, I kind of want to talk about old times. I'm a little sad that we don't get to sit next to each other while we do this because that's how we used to do it. But it, I still feel like I'm with you. Mostly feel like I'm with you, you know, because even though we're in just little squares here. Um, and so I, I just want to take the opportunity to just have a more intimate episode, even in the face of all this stuff that's going on, which is very important. And France is important. And I can even I can even probably in thinking about this, the changes I've gone through, and I don't want to get, you know, since that first episode, I can even kind of say why it is that I'm like, you know what? I don't think I want to talk about working class struggle in France. I, I think I want to talk with Eduardo about us. Yeah. Well, as I'm pulling up our episode, just because I'd like to look at something, there was a point I think I wanted to show us that we can. I um. I wasn't too sure, Andy, I want to do this because I really don't like past episodes, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Mostly I wanted to discuss France, yes, but also it was another layer of, I'm not very, I'm not very excited to see past episodes. I have morphed a lot since then, since that, how old was I? What year was it? Uh, 2018. 
2000, since 2018, I've, I've become different. And I feel as if I have shared my journey through what's left on my changes. And I've certainly had a different intention back then to what my intention is. I think overall, I still maintain one thing very certain, and that is to always be involved in the movement for change or transformation, in our case, to be revolutionary. I didn't know at the time I wasn't as revolutionary as I feel today I am. Uh, I find myself constantly working on issues that are local and that are more in tune with or that are more working class, I feel like, more people with just on the ground work with people like my site, my school, or the people that I've talked to, uh, rather than people who have already gone to school, sort of kind of greenwashed and whitewashed uh, socialism. And, uh, and I do feel as if this is, a reflection, but feel free to ask me any questions or, you know, and I will ask you as well because I, I'm curious very much. So when you see yourself, when you saw yourself uh, this week in that episode, which was only a 31 minute episode. Yeah. Which it's was of, a. Yeah, go ahead. It's one of our, sh I think it's the shortest episode we've ever done. Um, it, it, it should have been the, sh it's the best episode. It's the shortest <laughs> episode, but that's how it should be. <laughs> well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll keep this short too. We'll see. Um, so the, I guess the first thing for me was what came up is, and this had been talked about earlier when we were talking to Jessica about when, remember we had that picture of you. By the way, pause, pause, pause. I'm wearing the very same jumper that I wore in that episode. So <laughs> true. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. Sorry. Go ahead. You no, good. That's that's true. <laughs> and so that's kind of what I want to get into, like in some ways, is do that kind of stuff. Um, it, <laughs> you had mentioned, um, you know, when you had that picture of you and Jessica in front of the actual uh, address where we and the, the apartment where we yes. shot. Um, yeah. And you would remind me about things like the lighting. Like we used to take take uh, stand up lights and just literally knock them over, you know, and they were and we would lean them pointing towards us. Because it was actually very difficult to get the lighting, and I, I remember, you know, setting up always. You come in the coming in and helping me set up the, the, the sofas and moving the sofa around because I lived in an apartment with two other roommates, and you would just visit and help move furniture around. We would do that to set up, knock all the lights down so that they would the lights would be pointing towards us. I remember setting up those mics, the mics that we had right here. I remember always fidgeting with them, trying to figure out how far they should be. You know, like to get it to get a good sound um it was only later that i realized if you listen to it you'll hear a buzz in the in the in the background <laughs> it was only later that i realized you could remove that buzz using some things on iMovie um and even from the very beginning i've only used iMovie to do editing um i've gotten a little bit better with it but you know um that, so that's one thing and it also reminded me of the way we had the setup with your phone um and it was set up on That's a, right. <laughs> like we would have it on a, how was it first? Like we would have it like. Oh kind of my perfect. goodness. We had an iPhone six, I think it was. And I couldn't record a lot because I, because I think it was an iPhone six. And I, and I had only, I had only enough space for my apps for a few apps and, and for the whole video because I just didn't ever, I didn't ever update it. So I didn't have up, I didn't, because I'm not very, I don't do games. I don't do things on it. I just see it for practical things. Now I use it for a bit more things like exploring things. I add like eye nature and stuff like that. But, but at that time, I just wanted to use it for the very basic thing. So I kept having this old phone when everybody else was updating themselves. And so Andy would want to record. And I said, well, I can only record as much. And so we would record 15 minute segments. <laughs> if we got, we would re <laughs> if we got lucky, we would get 20. Right. <laughs> that meant I had to delete a lot of things off the phone. <laughs> 
That's right. And you would and you would do that before the episode. I'm gonna delete, delete, delete. You would be <laughs> um and so I remember that. Like and sometimes you would get calls and we couldn't tell what was happening on the on your phone. Um yeah. and so we were like, Well, is this recording? We'd and we'd stop it to see if it was recording. So it was it was it was stressful. Um and I remember the pictures behind us, like we had the the Oh right. The um the because one of my roommates was an artist and and she had done most of the art that you would see you would see behind us. Um mm-hmm. and like those 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 spray cans that have had art on them, like I said, fresh. I mean then that that painting right behind us that would sometimes fall because it was literally put up there with duct tape. Um and and so I don't know, it's just like it was but I also just remember sitting next to you and just us, you know, being shoulder to shoulder kind of thing. Um and it would be a little bit awkward to to look over, but I mean, I do, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, and of course, I just also think about the time that I would drive you home because we would spend a lot of time talking about either the episode or about people we have in common or just just a lot of different stuff. And that that was very, I really enjoyed that as well. Um, so just, yeah. just brought those kind of memories back. Well, I appreciate you saying all of this, Andy. I mean, I, what, how this started, if we were to go in chronological order, was because of my own, as I think I've speckled, sprinkled here and there, the, the origin of this story was, but since this is going to be a bit more formalized, I'll just say, I I had come from more liberal, progressive um, politics, right? Leftist, leftist politics. But my yeah. My very close friend, Jake, who I'd grown up with, he and I were beginning, he was having a change in his politics. So his 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 were becoming more and more um, conservative. I think he was questioning things that I would say to him. I hadn't been explicitly open to him about how I felt about things. And I think it was challenging for him to listen to it. So we would have a lot of conflicts and we're both raised in Jehovah's Witness backgrounds. So we both know how to preach at each other. Mm-hmm. And so we both talk over each other. I've, of course, learned differently later on in life that you have to kind of learn how to debate but give each other turns. But I understand his style because, you know, we were raised in the same religion. And so we became very conflictive because we didn't let any of the others speak. And so I had invited Andy, hoping to get Andy to convince him and to have an ally at that time, a white male talk to him, thinking Jake probably needs a white male to talk to him because he's not getting through with me. <laughs> and uh, and Andy was very uh, honest. I appreciate you have been, you had been very honest. You had said that you probably had some some ways differently, some different ways of seeing the way that I was talking about. So we were talking about identity politics at that time and racism. And I said, you know, even if we disagree on these small bits of areas, I think it would still be helpful Mm -hmm. because I still think that you see a side that he has not seen clearly. Even if we may have because you were at that time questioning identity politics yourself mm-hmm. and that's when jake and i had this whole discussion with you and jake really he doesn't mind me saying his name and stuff he's very he's very hard-headed i know jake for a very long time he doesn't care about this stuff and he really likes andy he just likes to debate and i think it serves him because he loves he doesn't get a chance anybody to talk about this stuff in his social life because people don't want to be confrontation about topics that are hard to discuss, you know? So uh, he just completely disagreed with Andy, you know? And I think at that time, more than anything, now that we reflect, Jake and I, I think Jake was just being defensive about, like, his identity and what that meant for him, you know? And what does it mean? And I think that's what identity politics sometimes does to people. It's like... um. Not, I don't want to oversimplify things. We've had a whole discussion on this on an episode that we can just that people can look at. But for Jake, it was very important for him to go. It's like, 
I'm not racist. Like, I really do love you as my best friend and you're a person of color. Why would anybody dismiss me and my opinions of what I have to say in the world if I honestly don't have any racism in my bones? Like, I don't, I, I'm clearly not the KKK. Like, <laughs> do you know? And it, to him, this was a very crucial issue. Like, I, he just felt his voice was being dismissed because he is white and, and, you know, identity politics, the strong liberal politics is you don't have anything to say because you don't, you're white and a man and straight. And so shush yourself and let everybody else talk, right? This is the way that he was told. And I even used that a few times with him. So anyhow, back to this. So when I, later on, I, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to use the internet. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to use the internet. And I'm going to make sure that the, we go on to a judiciary public forum and have the social court <laughs> um, judge Jake for his actions. <laughs> Anyhow, I appreciate Envy made, made a call to me and he said, no, no, I don't think you should do that. That It's not necessary. What, do you, what are you trying to get out of here? Like, what, what are you trying to get out of that? And do you value this friendship? And we had a discussion. But it was within that phone call, I think, or after, that you had said then. And just to be clear, when you say you want to go in court, at that point, you were thinking of doing a, almost a show. Yeah. It would be Jake and Eduardo. It wasn't. Yeah, it would show. be yeah. online. It would be a discussion online with him. But then what did you say to me then? So you, after you appeased me and you said, look, not appeased me, is that the word? After you calmed me down, you said, okay, look, relax. You know, this relationship is clearly very important to you. And we talked about what the best way I tend and to reflect. Just to point one thing out, the reason you asked me to have this conversation was not just to convince Jake of something, but you were really worried about the future of your friendship with Jake. And you were trying to figure out things. You were worried that this lifelong friend, you were going to lose it as, as a result of political break. So you were trying right. to do things, mend things personally and mend things politically. And so you were like, would you be willing to talk to this guy? Maybe that's will make a difference. Because I remember you being really nervous about losing this friend. Yeah, that's very true, Andy. I was very upset. Trump had been elected. I think there was a lot of things in the air for me. At that time, I was very... I had just been moved by the wave of what was happening in the country. You know? But anyhow, you proposed something. And what did you propose, Mr. Andrew Lipson? Dr. Andrew Lipson, let's get it correct. <laughs> well, it, it's true that you talking about Jew and Jake doing a podcast or a, 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 ch a channel of some sort some, yeah. got, got me thinking about it because I had been watching YouTube channels, mostly not political stuff, but like watching video game, I think, uh, people who would review video games, people who would review movies, people who would talk about um MMA or UFC, so some of those kinds of sports. Um, and I was like, that looks fun to do that. I don't really want to do that, but I would like to have a, I started to get this hankering to, to take some of the conversations I was having with Brian and sometimes with you and, and some of these thoughts. And I was like, these people bring a lot of passion to these discussions about mo movies or video games. I have a lot of passion about these politics, about politics. And I, and I felt you did too. And I was like, and of course it was also be, and as I was, I, I thought of myself as on the left um, and building the left, which we'll talk about more later. That's still the case. Um, but that was the reason for starting the show, at least for me is, is rebuilding a left is I had felt like it was, it really was very hard to talk about politics on the left, honestly. And so I was like, who can I? Who could I do this with? That where I could actually have an experience that would be meaningful for me, and it might be helpful for somebody else to listen to, because they'd ha they'd hear a difference of idea. And like, because I thought about my friend Brian, who was also a Marxist, but I was like, you're just going to be hearing the same people. That the range is too narrow for that to be interesting. And so I was like, I think since you were prepared to do it with Jake, it was like, well, what about me and Eduardo? And I I think I called you up and said, you've been talking about this with Jake. And I don't think you should do it, <laughs> but maybe you should do it with me. Um, and I can't remember your immediate response, but um, you can you can say it from there. 
I was careful. I thought this isn't what I had thought about. With Jake, I had an, an intention to debate and to, <laughs> he'll know this, I don't mind. Publicly shame him, <laughs> but take off his head in front of the public square. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. How dare he not listen to what I have to say? You know, <laughs> using leftist politics, liberal leftist yeah. politics, and make sure he gets what he does. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> um. No, no. So that that so it, so what you were proposing though was different. It wasn't this public square that I'm describing. It was an honest conversation about politics, and I, alongside you, and having had our conversations, we had cafe conversations. Just you and I had already established those conversations. I knew that I had, maybe I felt pressured. I think it was I felt pressured to get things right or correct because I hadn't had some defined positions. And it seemed as if we were just not going to discuss socialism. It was going to be discussion of many topics. So I had some confidence in some topics and I didn't have other confidence in others. And I know that I knew at the time that you didn't vote that you didn't you didn't involve yourself with local politics. So I I felt as if, well, what are we going to discuss? We're going to discuss things I may not be familiar with. So I was very careful. I was afraid. What would it turn into? How would I look? What was I don't want to seem stupid about things. I I'm not versed, I'm not an expert on certain topics, but you had said from day one, like, we're not experts. We can discuss it as we see fit like over time i heard that even like after i went to your home but it i just sort of let it go out of my head because i was going to do it a specific way i had a specific way of doing it you didn't want to have transcripts i wanted to have notes a few things memorized i wanted to have just my points on on the dot on bullet points and you were like we're not doing that and I thought, what? So I thought, I don't know what we're doing, but let's just try. Let's see. And I didn't tell you, but I thought, if this doesn't go well, I'm going to drop. Because we're just, no, this doesn't, because I didn't know what style you were doing. And I later realized you were doing you a mean, more. You mean drop the show, not, not me. Yeah. Okay. Right. No, not our friendship. Yeah. Just drop the show. Okay. Yeah. Because I thought, now. Obviously, I know it's an improvised version, and sometimes I feel we're doing some guessing of dates and here and there, although we get pretty good stuff. Like, we do pretty, we were pretty good on some of the things that we discuss. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, and so I want to say that you're also very good about correcting the record either on the show or on a later show if we get something yeah. wrong. So, I think, you know, yeah. So, I, I, I think that. When we did this, it was in my head not as clear, but we were going to discuss this intention. And so, as I look at this first episode, the who we are and why we are doing this, I had it from the start. It was to be educational, to be inspiring, to have to provoke conversation. But I did see myself imparting information. Most YouTube channels. I mean, YouTube is the DIY or the imparting of information. They're not inviting. I mean, they may at the end say, leave your comments below, but da, da, da. But it is, YouTube has been traditionally as a way to teach something, not co-teach, mm -hmm. right? So I, I think that that was sort of the mind. I can't fault myself just looking back. That was also what I had thought. We were going to begin one-on-one politics or something. Uh, and a lot of people told me when they saw my channel, our channel, um, they did tell me that, Andy. They did say, you know, whoa, 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 whoa. You're discussing Iran. You're discussing... Why don't you just begin with what the judicial branch is. <laughs> and I thought, 
uh, over time, that's not what we are doing. We're doing our lives realized, right? We are we are discussing. So if people are doing, I I would start to tell them if people are doing politics one hundred one. We were doing the most intermediary courses, actually more advanced because we're not even teaching at that point. Now we're just debating and disagreeing and philosophizing. Philosophizing. I don't like to use that because this isn't just theory. We're also taking action and discussing real stuff, right? And I think that that's beyond even intermediary. Intermediary. It's advanced stuff because we're doing this on the ground. And I'm sure there's lots of one-on-one -on -one conversations that you can have on YouTube. It is YouTube after all. So I just find your channel. And so that's what I did. So if I look back at this, reflect on this first episode, I see myself, I saw myself as doing that, which is completely opposite of what I'm doing today. Now I'm seeing what we're doing more of like what you said from the very beginning. I'll let you talk in a second. And which is that little light that beep beep trying to put out a signal for anyone who wants to organize i see myself doing that more and more today than in the very beginning i didn't really understand it fully at that time i do have one question for you can i can i speak to some of those things though? go ahead go go go, okay. go 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 hold on to your question hold on to your question um so yes um, I, I remember first off, one of my favorite things about that episode is the literally the opening to that episode. There's like this pause and then you give a look like we're, I remember being nervous. I remember I was nervous too. feeling like taking this jump into, into the unknown. And I remember like feeling sweaty and, you know, just, it, I, I, I was just nervous at the time. And to be honest, looking at back on it. I am not as a, you don't, I don't see my nervousness as much as I remember feeling it um, when I watched the episode. Although I can, I can see that I'm more relaxed now to talk than I was, than I was then. Um, but that thing you r bring about, first off, the thing that has held true throughout our show that, and that I think both of us were interested in and that, and, ha and we are still interested in it. And this is what I think our show has mostly done is it is not provided information as much as it has provided a, a show, shown people a way of discussion, a way people can enter into any discussion about any political topic um, because we can differ and not, and not break apart um, and not, you know, we, we, can, we can differ strongly even at times and still be in connection with each other at, 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 at a future episode. Um, now, folks have to know there were times we differed and Eduardo and I had to work out like some hurt feelings that had happened as a result of it, but that's, we can't get everything on film, you know, but that's all part of the process. Um, and one way or another, we came back next week and we were ready to talk again. Um, and we weren't committed because this is our livelihood to do this. We were committed because we still believed in this. We believed in take, taking this time together, but I do believe if there's one thread that's held true the whole time, it is the belief in the discussion, the belief in the idea that we need to hear each other and try to see what comes to that. Um, the notion, so that has held true, but the notion, and it, I pointed to it before, that notion of me sending a signal out and trying to get something back, that is less true for me today. Um, it's mm -hmm. less true for me today because I'm less clear about what I feel like I, remember how, and you, you said it, and it's it was entirely true. You said about me, Andy has harder lines. And this is why Andy, you kind of deferred it there. You said, I want to make sure people hear what you have to say. I'll, you, you, you have said, I'll say what I'm going to say. Eduardo, you, know, you said that. But I want to make sure you, because you have more defined lines on, around things, positions. And that was true then. And I believe much, it's not completely broken up, but those lines are much softer now and not as hard as they used to be. Um, all these years have taken, have essentially humbled that it wasn't like i had an arrogance about it but i was like no i'm pretty sure like this is what mark this is working class dictatorship of the proletariat uh, marxist politics and i did want to i had heard, i had seen marxism so fucked up i wanted to be okay i'm going to say what my version of it is and i'm going to and i'm going to try to articulate as best i can 
because I do believe in Marxist ideas and then Marxism as a mm. framework for understanding things. But so th that this place being a workshop to discuss politics, that's also held true throughout this time. But I feel less connected to that notion of sending out a signal to find somebody to come back to me. It's still there, but that is much less there than it was when we first did this episode. I just want to say that. I mean, I think it's related to the fact that I'm more unsure about exactly if somebody said, oh, I'm ready to do stuff. I'd be like, OK, what? And they'd say, they might ask me, what should we do? And I'm like, I'm not entirely sure. So uh, in, uh, it's, it's not just me sending out a signal. I'm also looking to see signals back. And I'm looking for leadership and guidance from other people as well at this point, because I'm not entirely sure what we should do, except that I'm, I'm more firmly convinced in my bones that we need a revolution. Now, what that revolution looks like, I'm less sure of than, than maybe I was when we, when we started in 2018. So I want to say that I think that hardness is not as much there as it used to be. And in fact, I would say counter, con, and, and as a counterpoint, I feel like you have hardened a little bit since that time. I have. I have. I do have a more clear. I have a more clear route. I don't think I can articulate everything, but I now feel more comfortable stepping into the unknown of what it will look like with us together. But I am clear that it begins with my neighborhood, my local taking over, and I said this before, taking over some site, whether it be a worker taking over their working site, their grocery site, and I don't think it's through a union as I, as I thought, or as I was convinced. I think it's that those specific workers taking over, those from their own locale taking over. They can call it a union if they want, but not to have any union leadership be the one guiding it. And I believe that they then take care of themselves and overtake and run and occupy this place. And then they slowly and the other, we start being in solidarity. Like, I want to be in solidarity with those people. If I, in my case, at the school, I want to be in solidarity with the occupiers of the Oakland schools, right? This further some other time, and I have more, more clear vision. But yes, I do. I, I have a question for you, though, Andy. You, you, you are someone that I had a lot of interest in discussing your personal background which we got into in another episode but i remember thinking about leading up to this first episode and during this episode and after just even as i watched this episode how lost you looked to me you look lost because you had a very secure background with the ISO and it was as if it was the routine the building the career that you built off of there so to speak the it was the very foundation that you needed the stability that you had in your life that moved what you did I believe besides the love that you had for the children at Mission High School, but also your colleagues, it was what motivated you. I felt drove you to, to just to have the wherewithal to deal with all of those issues at school. Because I think people, I've seen people work as a representative at other schools, and I see them burnt out. But I saw... I may be wrong, Andy, but I saw that you didn't get burnt out because this is your mission. It's at your school. And this is, if this is dealing with administrative, whatever, writing letters, or writing articles or whatever, creating caucuses, it was your full, your whole life, Andy. You know, even the EDU that you created alongside with uh, AJ, all of that. It's just amazing how we, the energy comes from within and it's an un, 
it's a bottomless pit of energy when you are so focused and passionate and you know this is the correct path. And I saw that in many areas for myself, but I saw it in you. When the ISO collapsed, when you left the ISO, I remember you were a wanderer, a lone wolf. I don't want to use that word because now it's been used for like <laughs> people who are shooting guns mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, now it's all been uh, taken over by someone else. But I remember saying that to you. So you've become essentially a lone wolf. And you're like, oh, yeah, try to find a new home. You know, I remember you went to go to some other socialist group. Didn't work out. And so we would meet up, you and I would meet up and you would read these, if Andy, if anyone knows Andy and Brian, they read these thick books <laughs> that go on forever. I read just as much, but I do not read about politics like they, these two giants who we've had Brian. These are two major polit polit politics books of readers. I don't, I can get through Give me war and peace. <laughs> give me uh, Anna Karenina. You can give me those books written by the Russian writer, but don't give me, you know, Marx's right. Capital One and all of that. No, <laughs> and Trotsky's books you were reading at that time. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I guess my question for you is, and as I, I think I'm, I always do this thing. That was the other issue I had during the episodes is I talk too much that I finally get to my point. <laughs> It's but Andy's learned over time that that's just the idea. I am, so he has to deal. Just like I deal with him every day. <laughs> Kidding, every day. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but deal with him and his last minute changes, like yesterday. So back to my question. So Andy, I I see you as a lost person. I really do. And this was your way of. I don't know. I really want to ask you now, five years later, what. What were what what stage or where were you, or do you think that my assessment of you is correct? Or do you know what I'm getting at, Andy? Yeah, and I I would say that that's the that would be correct. Like I would describe it as a person who you know international socialist organization Lavos, educators for a democratic union, UESF executive board, and I could even tell that I, like these are various layers of political structures. I was. I had entered in, had had been membership of, been in some le levels of leadership of those sorts of things, and it was like the floors falling out from under me, and I would I would fall through one floor, try to hit another floor, collapse through another floor, try to find another floor, collapse through that. I mean, that's what the experience was. As each of these organizations showed showed that they were not they were not true to the cause that they said they were to be part of, and. And that was also true of like the EDU, the Educators for Democratic Union, a, a, a labor caucus that, like you said, me and AJ and, and, and some others had started with this notion, okay, how how can we be revolutionaries with this? Can we do this? And the thing itself, it 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 didn't just degrade it, it 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 came up, it it ate up its own ideas. It it became the thing that it was fighting against. And this is what I kept on seeing, and it I kept on having to drop lower and lower and lower. And I was like, I kept falling through these layers of floors. And I think, and, I, and even after we did what, um, what, what's left, I got to the point of I'm, I'm off executive board. And then later I even said, I don't even think I should be a building rep because I don't really think people want me to be a building rep. They might vote for me to be a building rep, but they don't want it. Because when I try to do stuff, they're all run from it. So I was like, so I was coming to the same place that you have come to, which is you have to start from the bottom. You know, you can't build this thing. You can't be up some top place. You have to start from the bottom and build yourself with people who are looking to build a free and independent world for themselves out of their own actions. You know, you can't do it for people. It's not something you do for people. It's something you do with people. And, and the people you do it with are people who want that, not people who talk about it, but people whose, whose actions reinforce the fact that, yes, I want freedom. I want liberty. I want justice. And I'm going to, I'm willing to take actions to, to get that. And I know you talked about some of my friends and you have done that. Hema has done that. Frankly, all of you have been right, to be honest. But 
you know, you, I still take my chances with who I, with, with whom I do, you know? And, um, the reality was, is I needed a, I was trying to find a place of truth, a place where I could really engage with somebody in a true way. And I think I had a sense that I could do that with you, you know, like I did not realize how much my politi politics would be formed in this place and mm -hmm. formed in relationship with discussions with you. But it turned out to be essential. I, I mean, we've been doing this show pretty much weekly. We're at episode 255. We have not missed many weeks. Um, and, you know, it, it, it has, I did not expect to be, I actually did not anticipate that I would feel this sense of needing to be here and stay in this and do this partly for what we stand for, but mostly for me and mostly for the need to continue to try to make sense of this world and not having anybody who I trust except for people like you. Because I think it is important to say that we did have to deal with each other a lot more as a result of this show. We would talk and, and I loved you before, but I did not know you as well as I as I knew you before. I loved you almost from a distance in connection with, you know, Jennifer and other people, I'll just say, you know. Um, but now you have become a deeper set piece in my life. Um, and that's a result of this show. And we had to talk a lot more. We had to talk about differences we had about editing and things like that, but also figuring out what we wanted to do with the show. And also we would just talk, we would, we would laugh and talk about things that would come up in the show and even our arguments and things like that. And our, and our tendencies, you know, uh, uh, your, your tendency to, to wander off and my tendency to want to like flip, you know, I don't know, bring you back and say, no, you can't talk about that. We're going to, you know, to, to kind of direct things. Um, and so, I just we just became more familiar with each other and I feel like we could be we could be affected by each other even negatively affected by those things but it wouldn't lead to a break it wouldn't lead to us losing the relationship in fact I came to love you more and feel more trust in you as a result of talking through some of those differences not differences about Iran but differences about things about the way we did things you know and and you being willing to to criticize me and challenge me and me being willing to push back at times. The reality is my now my political my political people are now closer to family now. And that's Brandy, and that's Eduardo. It's kind of Kenny. Of course it's Brian. And and it's maybe being coming Jessica. Uh you know, it it just feels different than what it did. Even my, it's my brother to some extent. Um, it's my mom, it's Heather, it hasn't included my sister. And that's a, that's a hard thing. So I went from building an organization to building a family and I'm not sure what to make of that, but I still think we need organization, but the people I'm doing this fighting with, they feel more like just family, not just, I, they feel more like family than it's comrades who are families, who are family members. That's, that's, I guess that's what I would describe. Yeah, and that's surprising to me. I did not, I did not expect to be in this place, to be at this point, because I, I thought about, I think about the working class, and I didn't really think about working class and family together. I um, I appreciate you sharing what you've shared, Andy. I do. I one thing I really appreciate from our relationship is. I was afraid to be authentic and to be myself because uh, people do, can't take anger or authenticity. I say authenticity, but another way, I guess, is just being raw, if you, if I may. So I noticed that you would get, and when we would have discussions about what's left, sometimes you'd get frustrated with me. And I was very controlled about my feelings. And as I always tend to do, I tend to be controlled about my feelings. And so in, at work or anywhere, really, I've always learned how to be controlled. But you would sometimes burst out and da 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 da, da. And so I, I thought, okay, oh, that's enough. You know, you, you don't. You don't know me <laughs> to be so uncontrolled 
I have tried to be polite with you. So if you're going to be this way, I'm going to show you my wrath. <laughs> I'm going to show you what I do <laughs> to people who don't have controlled emotion. <laughs> so then I became as strong character with you. Uh, but in public, I tend to be even on what's left. I noticed I had become very controlled. Actually, one of the episodes where the um, Epstein episode, you know, I, you can clearly see how much I'm trying to keep the conversation together. And you were just that, 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 or it punches. <laughs> uh, which was fine. Politically, it doesn't matter. But there were times that you'd get frustrated and then I'd push back. And I finally started pushing back. And I told you, you know, I'm noticing you're doing these things and you want me to be a certain, like you, you would get upset that I would sometimes want to cut a lot. But then I told you the, the root of the issue is, is, you know, I, I would say to you later on, it was tough for me to say, you want, you don't want me to cut, but then to be honest, when we're recording, you interrupt me so much that I feel nervous. And that's why I say stupid things I'm not sure of. And I want to cut it. And then later on, you're on the phone telling me you don't want to leave it. And I'm like, this cycle has to stop. <laughs> so in order for you to be happier and not have me give you 100 edits of cutting things, you have to let me talk, I would tell you. So that's the only way. You have to give me permission to do things the way I talk because sometimes I would say something and I would give a history or the background of something and you're like, okay, but what do you think about it? And I thought, Andy, I, I don't function that way. I have to first think about describing the events that I've heard and, and saw and just First, let me get acquainted with the camera in front of my fucking face. Like, this is not normal. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not normal to be, like, recording yourself for the whole world to see about something for me as major as something online to be kept forever. And I always told you it was like a tattoo. So it's like, first, let me get, let me, let me, you know, let me play around with the topic a bit. And then that, we can cut it later. Don't, didn't you say we have that power? You're like, oh yeah, we can. And so, I was like, so then I would play around with it a bit. And then I finally gave my thoughts to it. But this was the very beginning where I was nervous as well, just like you were as nervous. I mean, I felt as if when you were describing your nervous first day of what's left, the episode, I felt like that for the following 10 episodes do you know it's like i felt that very same nervousness that you felt but consistently throughout every single episode i hadn't been recorded before i had been in activist circles but mostly i was there as support i wasn't there i was on the bullhorn a few times i have recordings of that and i sound awful but i mean nobody was recording those things except my dad who showed up <laughs> do you know so whatever mistake i made was just out there in the public sphere in the air it wasn't like these things that were going to be archived in a library on the internet forever to be kept so i was very nervous and so i felt you were unjustly rushing me or seeking to debate when i wasn't ready for it yet mm -hmm. or you know, and then they draw on giving me a call. I'm like, why are you cutting all these things down? And it's like, if you stop doing that to me in the episode, then you'll stop getting all these edits. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had a few. I remember the first time I finally said it to you. I was sitting. Yeah, I was sitting down and I was said, Ugh! and then I said, you need to stop doing like you need to stop making me nervous. You're making me nervous. You make me nervous during the episodes. And I you want to keep everything, but then you need to let you need to let me be the way I do things because it doesn't work. I cannot. And then you got it. I remember you got it. And then I'd have to remind you 
more times. And that was it. Over time, you just learned how I talk. And I do repeat myself a lot. And sometimes I, I, I think I roll over the same topic over and over because I'm trying to think my thought processes. And I've gotten better over time. You know, it wasn't easy also receiving our first trolls. And who do they attack first? They attack me. So it's like, it was it was a lot for me in the very beginning. And I felt you weren't giving me a lot of grace. You know, it was like a dancing partner that was being really, like, it's like why can't you dance? Like, like, <laughs> like well, <laughs> you know? Uh, so that was challenging. Uh, when we finally, if you want to make any comments about that, because I have something else I want to bring up about around similar issue. No, I mean, I do think, I do think I've learned something from that about listening and about letting go. I think mm. the, the fight we had over that and you essentially winning that battle over time, you know, even though we still, we still run back to that same, those same front lines every once in a while, but less often. Um, I think right. that, that war has largely been won by you. It just has to be revisited every every once in a while. Um, I do feel like I learned something about listening and about accepting that a conversation is not something you control. A conversation is something that you have to just let happen. It is all the participants shape the conversation. And that's that's the way any conversation has to be. Yeah. I, I think what, <laughs> if I may, you can cut this off, Andy. What, what, so it, so it came from that to another conflict we had, which is I'm very good at, this is a, I don't know if this is true for anyone. I'm very curious. I would love to read anyone's comments. I really say that sincerely because we have a small group of people who comment. I'm very curious for Marjorie and everyone out there that comment. I I tend to have argument or this fight and then suddenly, boom, rapidly switch on over to the next topic and I'm done. It does not linger for me. And I think I learned that working with kids because I used to have conflicts with adults and you can't bring in the same energy with children. You And I, I always told myself, because when I'd see my parents fight, I don't ever want to do that with children. I don't want the kids ever to feel that it that they're at fault for something that happened between two adults. So I, I, I've just learned just with my brother, with people, you're not the cause of what just happened with me and someone else. So I can switch. It doesn't, I don't, I, I don't know the switching and it's gone. It's, it's, I've let it go. Sure. I, it's in the background somewhere, but I've moved, I've moved on and I've noticed people still linger with it and they're still masticating it and they still get upset and in these episodes if anyone watches i'm not going to say where which ones but you can tell when someone is clearly upset throughout the entire episode one of them being jake <laughs> <laughs> where he was angry the whole episode and then another one being andy but you can tell in the episode that the person continues having this thought over something that happened and i don't i don't perform that way so one of the conflicts that we I had was I got really upset with you one time. You can delete this end if you want. I got really upset with you one time in one of the episodes. You wanted to cut. You wanted you you were done. You wanted to stop the entire show, stop the entire episode. And I got furious. <laughs> I was really upset with you because I thought, no, that's not how you do things. We have integrity to things or we don't stand on any, like you have to stand on something. You have to have principle. You have to have, no, integrity. You have to have integrity to things. I may not be perfect on many things, but you have to finish things. Even if it's messy or whatever, I've always, and you've never seen me walk out of one of these episodes, even when I've been nervous and my hands are sweaty, even when we were doing things like the French politics one and I was super nervous and I, I've never walked out of anything. And I remember there was this episode with you and uh, you wanted to walk out or like leave or stop it. And it's like, I don't know what we're doing. I just don't know what we're doing. And it's like, we have to find our footing. I'm sorry, but we have to continue. 
And I was really upset with you thinking, how dare you? How dare you want to drop me out? We're partners in this. You know, we are going to finish the episode, whether you are happy with it or not. And we're <laughs> going to find a way to finish it. We're going to edit it heavily. But you're not going to just drop me off like that. You know? I felt like you were breaking up with me in that moment in front of the whole world. It's like, can you break up with me privately? Like, can you fucking finish this episode and pretend we're all good and goody, whatever, and like finish and talk to me later on? And and you did it right in front of Kenny. I was so angry with you that day. It was on Russian bots, if you remember. Yes, I do. I remember. <laughs> That's what we had gotten into. Uh, I thought it was the census. I thought it was the census that episode. No, that was Kenny being upset. <laughs> okay. And and yes, um, I did not know it had that. That I mean, I, I remember you getting upset. But I, I was very was, upset. Yeah, but I don't think I realized how much it had frightened you and how much you had felt like you would felt dropped, you know, like left um, as a result of that. So I, that I didn't really know. I knew you were upset and I knew we had you had to be like we had to carry on. Um, and it was something that you talked more about at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. and then you you learn that word actually because I, I i remember saying that a lot the show must carry on we must carry on <laughs> anyhow that, I, I guess we're that was I, I think what i'm reflecting on as we're talking about all of this is just the intention of the episode of what's left has was the shared intention was to make it a space safe enough for both of us to discuss hard topics, to discuss things. And we've always said that may be unpopular and we do not have to agree on it. And we have shown our feelings through it. Like I shared with you how I felt nervous and also felt like insecure um, and felt this afterwards i felt upset with you and stuff and then you with me and stuff we've learned through our through it i think it served as, as a good vehicle for us in our relationship but it does talk it does mean something about politics and that is politics are very personal very very personal personable or personal either way just it's not here but personal personal personal, personal. yeah and I think if we're to have a working class movement, we're going to have to have challenging conversations. And that will mean having conversations about the personal as well, because it does seep into it. You know, the debating is challenging for a lot of people. I've had conversations like among what's left with former colleagues and, and other people, and they just get so around, like so upset or whatever and I mean, like they want or they want to label me or whatever and I'm thinking I'm we're on the same team you know like this was one person on my school site I can say this it's fine we disagreed heavily on the teachers union direction she and I are working together on other issues and she was passing out this, this uh, protest for, as if it was for uh, UESF and she hesitated from giving it to me. I'm thinking I'm not opposed to more pay and more resources. I'm not opposed to it. I don't know. We hate disagreed on one. Well, we disagree on many areas, but we strongly disagreed on one area we can still work together. I just don't know if we can trust each other because you play dirty. I did not. <laughs> I'd never play dirty with you. You play very dirty. <laughs> so I may not trust you, but we can work on the same things. I'm willing to. So I, so I, I, I think that what's left serves as an example for folks to, I think, I believe, and maybe this is too much for me to say, but I believe for for the world, for people, for, for organizing groups, <laughs> to to see that it is uh, it is possible to have challenging and difficult conversations and not always agree on everything, but 
coming to understandings. Uh, and it's a continuous ongoing discussion about many topics that are going to evolve in your life. Mm -hmm. But I've talked too much. Go ahead, Andy. No, no, no. I mean, I think, <clears throat> so, I mean, I guess what, what I want to say. Well, first off, um, I just want to note also that another thing that changed from the start of what's left from that first episode is the idea that I want to build the left. Um, oh, you know, I, that's not an idea I hold to anymore. I still am working with people, you know, Brian and Tom, you know, Tom, we don't want to say work, but I, I value the connection we made with Tom, who's, you know, from, from Germany. Um, those are leftists who still feel like we need to build the left. And I value my connection to those people. Um, but I don't feel the same way as they do. Um, I keep a, Maybe I keep a, a, a grasp of them thinking, okay, maybe I could be wrong here. But um, currently, I'm not interested in building the left. Clearly, I was interested in build, my conception of building the left when I started the show with you was, oh, revolutionaries talking with progressives or liberals. That's the space in which this discussion has meaning. And now I'm like, that is way too narrow. Like, you can go, there are there's a broad spectrum of people people identifying politically from libertarian to conservative to alt right to alt, uh, socialist to um, anarchist to revolutionary. I feel like everyone in there is part of the spectrum that I want to be talking with and engaging. And if I had felt that way when we started our show, I suspect I would have probably been looking for somebody like who we found with Jake. Um, Kleisic, um, John John Kleisic, like looking for a person like that to be almost a third part of the show would have really changed the show if I started what's left with the idea of like not even trying to build a left, but just trying to have that kind of discourse from left to right, if you will. That would have been an interesting show, but that's not where I was at. And so I'm, I'm noting that, you know, my my field was was more narrow back then. Um, when we started this show and it's, it's broadened now and it's, we still have the name what's left and I think I'm fine with it, but I'm not interested in building the left anymore. I am build, interested in building a revolutionary movement, but I don't know if that's the same thing. I, th I don't think that's the same thing as building the left. I think it's building, it's, it is, it is about meeting and organizing with other, other, I would say working class people who come from a variety of places, but are also want to join you and, and, and see the need to find others to, to join in that fight for changing the world and changing it, like overturning the way that the, the way the system is not just making some surface modification. Uh, that's right. You, you, proposed this title and I agreed to it because of it made sense. You're right. It was about this side of the aisle. So it's hard to say it like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was this side of the introspection that we were trying to provoke. Right. And challenge. I mean we say it every time, right? I mean I I I'm okay with the title and even the intro because it is still largely divided into left and right and and uh and i have i'll speak for myself i have more in common with the left because i came from that from that tradition and i feel it's my job and duty just to challenge to continue challenging my own left mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh but i do like you have also come to move away so we've just i've heard you a few times say maybe that this whole binary of this left and right is becoming less and less marked mm -hmm. for you and so it is it is true for me as well it's um it's becoming more it's hard for me to listen to some of the people who 
are still in my circles on the left circles, but liberal left progressive circles, when they challenge or or undermine someone that has a more conservative view. Yeah, I would just say I've moved from thinking that the discussion is left versus right to maybe re revolution versus reform. Person mm -hmm. who's dedicated to keeping the system but wants to reform it. I'm not going to call them my opponent, my enemy, but I would say that we have political we have a big political difference. Um and the people who you can find who agree with you that this system needs to be fundamentally overturned. I have been surprised that the people who have that sentiment for it, not just the words, but the actions, um, are not all, they're not always on the left, you know? Um, and I think I do, I do believe in actions more than words, you know? And I think there are people who say they believe in the system, but who act in a way that is like from the base, working just with regular working people and and take an approach that I would describe as revolutionary. And so those are people who I definitely want to be in talking with and being like, hey, your actions are ones I agree with and your framework and the approach you take is one I agree with. You don't call yourself a Marxist, but you are acting like a person who thinks reg regular people are the ones who are going to change the world. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's... That is, if there's any group that I'm looking to call together, I guess it would be that. Well, I don't have much more to add. Let's see. Um, I think the only other thing I would say is that one thing that has changed with me, and I want to bring it back to France, not, not, or has been altered, is I'm not in a union anymore. I'm not in an organized site. Um, I, I am more untethered from this notion of working class struggle. It's in its formality that I, that I sensed in the workplace. Um, I don't know what to make of that. I don't, cause right now I'm not organizing at my new work site where if I am, it's, it's really in the very beginnings of things. Um, I was much more conscious of doing that at Mission High School. And so that has some, somewhat, I feel like that's one of the reasons why I'm unmoored. One is that the level of working class struggle in this country isn't what we see in France. And so I'm like, I don't know if I can connect, if I can feel a connection to that. But secondly, my own position, most of my organizing is no longer done in my workplace. Um, mm. It's done with my wife. It's done with my family. Uh, you know, described broadly here, and it's done in places that are not but by other workers in some ways, but not at a work site. It's not or it's not coming out of a work site, and that that has created some confusion for me about what what am I supposed to do? Where where am I supposed to be to make to to best help things ro get rolling? Um, but at the same time, I've also learned to just let go of the idea that I'm, I need to have an answer. Um, one, I don't have an answer to, to many of these questions. And I, the, the most important thing I can ask myself is, well, do I still believe in the cause? And I, I do. So just, just stay in motion, you know, um, and try to stay true to the idea of doing something that's independent, doing something that's just with people who are asking ourselves, what would we want? Okay, and if we can figure out what we want, how do we make it happen? Not how do we ask a politician to make it happen or, you know, try to get some institution to make it happen for us. How do we make it happen? You know, so those are tough questions, but I do think it starts with what do we want? And I think that's another reason why I always insisted that this show be about what regular people think. And, you know, you sometimes wanted to invite politicians to this show. I didn't want to do that. I, I, it was much more important to me that other people hear that regular people can talk about stuff and have something very meaningful and important to say. And it's important to listen to each other because that's what we're going to have to do. Yes. And uh, I think that is a place where many of us are at as well, Andy. You know, AJ came onto this show as well. And she was expressing something similar. 
Uh, you asked, you had asked us about this some time ago when I was in Mexico and we had an episode where, what are we doing? It's a constant question. What are we doing? I know I want to continue doing what's left. I want to continue challenging traditional notions or widely accepted tr notions. I want us to be a beacon, if that is, even for just 200 people. It makes me very happy that we have the community that we do. I always say, jokingly, cult fo following. <laughs> But that's because it's not, I don't think we're cultish at all. I just think I say that because just like there are people who watch certain random, but often alternative films or listen to alternative music that happen to be cult followers that only listen to this or watch that. I say it jokingly. No, I don't think we're a cult at all. But I do appreciate the community that we have built with what with the What's Left community. And if we continue being that little safe Oasis virtually and sometimes in person. Great. Um, so I will continue doing that. But yeah, it is a constant question. Where do we go from here? What do we do? And I I I think we've answered that question a few times. So I'm not going to go into it completely, but say a few things. It's just I continue preparing, being a prepper, so to speak learning how to take care of myself independently. It's challenging to be off the grid completely for me at this moment, but learning how to do things such as skills and organizing locally. And when there is massive uprisings, when we do have that at some point, I hope to be an asset mm -hmm. to that and be a contribution, make my contribution. But wherever you're at, wherever I'm here, whether we're doing this or wherever, I think we continue being in this lucha and this struggle. Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. Without Kelvin wanting to, yeah. So that there, France, is, there, France is France, but this is where things are at for us here in the Bay Area. Uh, all right. Well, do you have anything else? That's it. No, just uh, appreciate you, Eduardo, and I'm glad to. Uh, Glad we could have this to you know talk about this. It's been nice to kind of go back over that terrain. Oh, we didn't mention is the two added participants to what's left afterwards, but <laughs> I think everyone knows by now. Yeah, this was. I think this was about you and I, for me at least. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. Let but find you. looking forward to have Jessica back next week. Yeah. And hopefully Difference. Kenny Kenny said he might find an opening in the schedule to come back, but we haven't heard from him yet. That does it for this week's episode. What's Left is a weekly political podcast slash channel challenging the mainstream left. We post information about our topics and our guests on the episode notes, wherever you found this episode or on our blog at whatsleftpodcast.com. You can find past episodes to this podcast slash channel there and connect with us. I remind folks, if you fancy anything you have heard here, please subscribe, rate, review. <clears throat> Turn on your notifications to any of our platforms on the Spotify, iTunes Podcast, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, BitChute, uh, Odyssey, YouTube, Rumble, or Telegram. And you can find our blog in any of those links in the episode notes, wherever you found this episode. If you would like to give us feedback about something you've heard or suggest something for us to cover, contact us through our blog and Andy will always respond. Always appreciate Mr. Andy. Dr. Andrew Lipson. <laughs> <laughs> Responding. I'm Eduardo Barco with co-host Andy Lipson, and we'll have Jess and hopefully Kenny on again. Uh, Jess for sure next week. Thank you all for listening. Ciao. Oh, one last thing. And we had this intro and outro fight for me to include. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and you won that battle and you were right. You were definitely right about that. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Ciao. <laughs>